podium. Thank you very much and a very good afternoon to all. Uh, my topic today is how we can do uh, a capsular excess successfully. Most of the times, I would say almost 100 on 100. If the technique is good, well, we don't really need to have a tripen blue also. It may sound very astounding to everybody, but it is doable. So that's what I'm going to show. The important here is not the part that we are not using tripen blue, but the part that how exactly we should make our capsular excess perfect and the technique in which it has to be done. So can I have my presentation, please? Uh, space it doesn't ha you don't have to drag or any way disrupt the configuration or the anatomy of the lens all you have to do is that you have to whenever you feel that there is a little bit of a um, loss in your um, holding you need to come out very gently put in some more viscoelastic and in these cases it's better to put some sort of a heavy viscoelastic dispersive viscoelastic so that uh, the um, there is no upward thrust in uh, these patients so very slow gentle maneuvering hold try and fold it around and drag, drag it around so that you complete the rexis. This is another case where it's a different type of a lens. Here there is no, uh, it is a mature cataract, but there is no uh, liquefied uh, cortical matter that is coming out. So here we just need to, again, the technique is same. Do not take the, uh, hold the capsule anywhere at the periphery. All try and make a two-stage uh, capsular excess if you are uh, uncomfortable with making a little bigger capsular excess. And all the maneuvers have to be in the space that is in the anterior chamber, never to touch any part of the capsular excess. This case I just did yesterday. And this is, you can see, a very difficult case. It is a Morgagnian cataract. And here again, the same technique which I normally do, it's also got a little bit of fibrosis on the capsule. At the center, hold it, and definitely you need to keep keep the margin of the pupil as your uh, guide, and keep on uh, moving very slowly without disrupting. You can see even here there is least there is a lot of uh, uh, fluid uh, inside the cortical matter, but still there is no disruption, and you don't see it leaking out. So very gently, you need to again hold. It's already folded that area, so you come back. It's, uh, now, in these cases, whenever there is a uh, lot of anterior capsule fibrosis, one must be very careful to be very gentle because they can go outward as well. Because whenever you try to push it too much uh, to the periphery, they may just run away. Uh, there are certain pearls which are very important in these, uh, this situation. Number one thing is that you need to have the patient's eye parallel, the iris plane should be parallel. The head positioning is very important because whenever you have the head tilting either to the right, you'll always see that the capsule runs away to the right. So positioning is very important and put methyl cellulose on the cornea, it gives you a magnifying view. Uh, staining is important if you are doing dealing with traumatic cataracts or you need some enhancement of the anterior capsule uh, and uh, differentiate it from the cortex. And uh, it, especially in corneal opacities also. And like I said, you should always try in case you're having any difficulty. If this is more control, do a smaller capsular excess and then you can do uh, enlarge it. This is a fibrotic plaque. This is what I was trying to say. Whenever you have to raise this uh, little edge, what you need to do is you don't do, this is the only place when you don't go in the center, but you see where the fibrotic plaque is ending and start doing your excess from that edge once you lifted the, um, the flap and try and go around the plaque. 
So uh, important here is you must have high magnification. Uh, I would say for beginners, very important to have a good microscope, maximum illumination and staining of the anterior capsule as and whenever you feel that they, you, there is any uh, problem, you can always go back and do that. Uh, now certain pearls, uh, during capsular excess, you have to pay attention to sharp focus of the anterior capsule. You should always have a clear corneal tear film, avoid the submerging of the cornea with a lot of fluid and positioning of the eye like I said. And the art here is do not have any downward pressure of instruments on the capsule because the uh, why should you do this is that if you can focus so well that you can do a good capsular excess your complication rates in the following part of the surgery will be almost negligible because you are going to begin with lot of focusing and sometimes we just you know deal with uh, this by just saying that we put in this type and blue and we have stained it so you just don't focus too well on the capsule so this is another one, another milky cortex that comes out. Pinch the uh, rex, make a rexus, make a flap right at the center, come out. You can either put, put some more viscoelastic to wash away your uh, cortical matter, fluid cortical matter, and then the similar way you have to complete your rexus. So this is a two-stage CCC which I said. At any stage where you feel comfortable, if you feel that there is a lot of adherence in the cortical fiber, fibers which are at the on the anterior capsule you can do this procedure of enlarging the rexus before putting the implant because here you will have much ease of doing your irrigation aspiration and removing this cortical matter so this is a very um, easy maneuver not difficult only thing is that you need to have a good uh, viscoelastic and uh, good focusing of the uh, capsule so in conclusion successful ccc is the key to good result in operating white cataracts and proper visualization and steady surgical hands can do without the staining of the capsule thank you very much thank you dr reena why you want to go without this dye yeah so um, the thing is that uh, it's like uh, it's your choice um, I don't use the dye because I feel when I'm focusing right at the start of my surgery, my focus on the uh, capsule and the rest of my surgery is much better. I feel like that. And I feel that yeah, even uh, the younger surgeons should try and do as many cases without staining because they will definitely have a less complication. Rate. Very true because the trend I've observed is for the, even the earliest cataract, uh, the younger surgeons have, there's a trend forming in training institutes to start using the dye. Of course, there's a point against the dye because anything that you introduce into the eye increases the risk of TAS, however yeah. sterile, however well made it may, well prepared it may be. So if one can achieve, fine, but of course dye makes life simple. It's a simple example, like uh, most of us now are so dependent on computers Let's and take a poll. Would you like to have a dye or you do not like to have a dye? With the dye. But if you could do it without See, the dye, I would you say like you would you like to do it without the dye or not? <laughs> the focusing is going to keep on fluctuating. So, without the dye, why you want to do it? I mean, that's what my opinion yeah. is. So, but so to be fair, it's, I mean, it's an easy example of uh, using calculators to calculate simple sums or doing it mathematically. So, with these your matters, uh, Dr. <laughs> anyway, so we'll move on to the next talk. Yeah.